Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at using the step sequencer to control effects or other things on an audio channel. So let's start by putting a step sequencer in place. This is the EQ we're going to use. I'm going to move it to my other monitor. Step sequencer here. And we're going to do a little longer set. We'll do it like that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to delete all of the items in the step sequencer except that one. And I think I'll just create a new one for automation. And I'm going to use MIDI control, just uh, 16, general number one. Can get rid of that thing. Open this up. We'll turn on the steps for all of this. Like that. So it's going to be a repeating thing that happens over time. And that's one of the things I like about this. We could actually, if we wanted to, not do all of those steps. But I think it's totally fine to do that. If I wanted to turn those back off, click on the little information thing, I could just go back down to 16. doesn't really matter, but um, it's really up to what kind of pattern you want to make for this. Next thing I'm going to do is just show you some information about how I got to where I'm going. Um, so there's a piece of data I want from our audio channel, and I want to be able to figure out exactly what the data is. So I open up my environment with Command-0. I'm going to do a monitor. I'm going to drag from my audio track into the monitor. Once I have that up, then I have this EQ, essentially with a band pass set up. It's a high pass and a low pass set up. And then I have one uh, peak boosted right now. Uh, it looks like it's at 270 hertz. And I'm just going to move this frequency right here. Look what happens. It says for the monitor, it's outputting fader to 17 and it's going back and forth with data. So this is what I need the step sequencer to be pushing out. Now it doesn't push out fader data like that. Let's move this back over. Now I'm going to take another monitor and we're going to do it from the instrument track that has the step sequencer on it. I'm going to do a new transformer. I'm going to do another monitor. And this is really just for showcasing what we're doing. Okay, so this one right here into that monitor. So now when I push play, you're going to see it was sending out control data. That's what that little icon means uh, on one channel one. And it was control number 16. We're going to put this into here and then we'll put it out into here. That way we can see exactly what's happening. So the transformer now status equals we're going to do control data because that's what's coming out right there. And we're going to set fix. And we're going to set this to fader. I just know that because the F here from that the EQ movement told me that this is now going to be needing to be fader data if I want to control it later. And the source was control data data from this little icon. So I'm just switching it from control data to fader data. And you can see it, it's from one on the control data. We need to put it to two on the fader data. So equals one, fix to two. And then the data byte, you'll see here it's from 16.
and we want to fix this to 17. And then the data by two is going to be variable so we can change it. Now I'm going to push play after I... So the input was this right here. The output now looks like this and that matches. The first three things match. So the data will still be adding. Okay, so you can see how easy it was to do that, even though there's a lot of knowledge involved with all of these options. And so I don't blame you if you're like a little intimidated by that, but if you follow these steps exactly, we traced what data we wanted to control. Now we took that and converted it to that data from the step sequencer. Step sequencer cannot, as far as I know, send out fader data. It just sends out control data. You could learn it, so you could route this in. Um, that's something I want to look at a little bit later. I haven't tested it out yet. But now I'm going to drag this into that audio channel. Close this down. Bring this back. Click up on that track. And now automation data. I don't think I want to go all the way up and down because I have the low pass things, but we'll do a little bit of a shape here. And let's push play. So that's a little bit of a just up and down motion, but I could, if we wanted to, uh, make patterns in this. So this is where it actually kind of turns into something more musical. And I was asking myself, how do we do something musical from this? We do some sort of rhythm in that. Uh, the original sound is just the sound of the ocean at a beach. And now we're going to add a musical or somewhat rhythmic element into it. So that could be like the beginning of a song that this rhythm turns into something else and it sets kind of the tempo for the drums or something that come in. So you, you can see why it might be useful to have this type of step sequencer involved with the audio track itself. And this works for almost anything in there. I mean, we can, any plugin we put on here that can be automated we could learn which data it is coming from there and assign that data using the environment to control it. Now, in the previous video yesterday, I talked about how I was thinking I had to do the IAC driver for this, and it turns out you don't, and that's because the step sequencer is akin to being out inside the, the arrange window. When you use an instrument track and want to use a MIDI effects, to control an audio channel. That data doesn't come in on the um, environment cables like this. So say I had a MIDI effect, it wouldn't actually come out into the monitor, et cetera, into the other channel. And so you actually have to use the IAC driver in order to pair those together. So that's why I was saying you might have to use the IAC, IAC driver, but you don't have to because that data is going out from the, the actual channel strip, and then we can just route it right into the other one. We don't even need any of this stuff if we can use MIDI data that uh, just works with the other channel. But in this case, I have all the monitors just to double check my work and the transformer to convert it from control data to fader data. Okay, so a lot of stuff, kind of a small package here hope that all made sense to you. There are more applications to this in terms of what we can do, um, but I think you get the gist now of how that works so you can actually see it and possibly implement it into your own stuff. Okay, that's it. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you uh, are enjoying these looks at some of this more advanced stuff with Logic. If you have any questions, 
don't forget to just leave them in the comments and uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. This was a great idea that someone else kind of proposed and uh, took it and analyzed it and figured it out and now sharing with everybody. Okay, see you all later.